Welcome to this NVMet release walkthrough of the new version 5.7. My name is Lennart Schafstedt. I'm a customer success specialist for NVMet. And today I will give you a quick overview about all of the changes. And then we will also dive into the different software components that have changed. Um, and yeah, just show you around a little bit so you get an idea. The agenda for today is that we will first have a look at the release notes and then we will go through different steps that may have changed and also applications that may have changed. So we have done some changes to the installation process. Uh, we have changed the headquarter now called the launcher. We have added the NVMet Central and also we have done some changes to the NVMet simulation settings. Okay, so I think first it's interesting to know what is new for this release. Basically, we have massively updated our graphical user interface, which you will see in a minute. Uh, we have a new file and project management system or a slightly different system. Now we have a better integration with our plugins for QJS, Rhino and SketchUp, improved stability for simulations by adding fail saves. Also, we have added a little sample project, the so-called playground, which enables you to learn a little bit more about the model and the thermal comfort indices PET and UDCI will now directly be written to your output files. All right, so after a quick cut, we will then have a look at the installation process. Okay, let's say you want to install MVMED. For that, you have to, of course, first download the new setup EXE. If it's then downloaded, you double click on it. It's going to ask me if I really want to install it. Then I get this message here. This is the first window where I can see or review our terms of service. Then I have to accept the license agreement, normal software installation again. And then this is the first step where we need to do something, not only select the installation path, but we need to define a workspace folder. For that I'm going to click on workspace. I'm going to select my D drive and just click OK. And it's going to create this NVMet workspace folder. I already have one because I already installed the software, but you can just select one drive, then press on OK and it's going to create this folder. Then you press on next. Um, here you can select a shortcut name, just press next. And this is now special as we can choose if you want to install QJS. QJS is a free to use geographical information system, which we have a plugin for. So if you want to install this as well, then you can check this box. And you can also select if you want to download our uh, sample project data, which is the playground I've already talked about, which basically enables you to directly dive into data analysis, work with, with MVMet in a whole without having to create your own stuff, without having to run your own simulations, basically. So I also want to download this and work with it right away. Uh, so I'm going to select it, then I press next. And if I now press on install, it's going to install not only MVMet, but also QJS, and it's going to download the playground data. So I'm not going to press install because I have already installed it, but you should press this button. And yeah, that's basically it with the installation. It's going to run. And yeah, I would say we meet again in a few minutes uh, when you've got the setup installed. And then we will have a look at the MVMet launcher. All right. So if we have successfully installed MVMet, we can open the MVMet launcher. Formerly, this was called the MVMet headquarter but we have changed the name. It looks also a little bit different. So we now only have two tabs here. We have the MVMet tab, which contains all of the MVMet tools for project management, uh, model area creation, simulation settings and simulation start, and also for visualization of analysis outputs and also for the post-processing of the thermal comfort indices. What we have added is that you can now directly start one of the three plugins from the launcher directly if you want to, to do so. And you can also see directly if you have installed the plugins. Under the help tab, we have links to the forum, to our YouTube channel, and also to tutorial data. And this is important, under the help tab, you can now register your license by clicking on about change registration and then opening the license file and registering it. 
Okay, so now let's have a look at the MVMet Central. The Central is basically a new tool that we have introduced into 5.7, which helps you to efficiently manage your projects, basically gives you a better data overview, and we added the so-called scenarios, a feature that we will have a quick look at in a second. To go into the NVMet Central, we need to click on the Manage Projects button. And when you have a fresh installation and you have downloaded the Playground as well, the Central will look like this. In this first section here, we have different sections. So the Select Projects section, then we have the Scenario Selection section. We can select our input data, simulation files, and also analysis maps. Uh, and in this first section, this should be uh, familiar to you. Here we can manage our projects. To do that, we can just click on this button here. And then this window opens. We can see here our projects. And we can also see here our edit scenarios, which we can create and delete if we want to do that. Let's first create a new project. To do that, you click on this button here then this window pops up and you can yeah, just create your new project, group it. This will create a new section here. This is basically for a better project management, I would say. And then you can give it a description and you can also say that your project uses a project database if you like. All right, we will stay with this playground here. If you click on it for a second, maybe let's first cancel this. Uh, if you click on this playground here, we can see that we have two different scenarios. We have a base scenario and we have an optimized scenario. In the base scenario, we have a status quo model area. And then in the optimized scenario, we have done some changes. So we changed the INX file and we have run another simulation. And basically we can compare these two scenarios. Now let's have a quick look at how the data structure with the new projects and scenarios works. For that, I go to volume D where I have located my MVMet workspace. Double click on it and I go into my playground project folder. And here you can now see all of the data that belongs to the base scenario. I can also see the output folder for the simulation files for the base scenario. And I can see a folder called optimized scenario, which is the folder for the data which belongs to the optimized scenario. If I now double click on it, I can see here the scenario specific INX file, scenario specific SIMX file, and some LeoX files for Leonardo. I can also see the output folder for the optimized scenario. Keep in mind that Whenever you want to use scenarios and you want to, for example, save a file of a specific scenario, you always need to save this file in the specific scenario folder. If you don't do so, you will encounter problems and won't be able to use the tool properly. So let's have a look at the different sections here of the MVMet Central. So for example, if I go on to Playground Base Scenario, we can see here our uh, yeah, Playground uh, website, which is embedded here. Uh, here you can also download our playground guide, which is a learning tool you can access when you're working with the playground. And you can again download the playground if you like, or you can watch a video where I am explaining a little bit more about the playground. What we can see here is that we have yeah, our two available scenarios. So our base scenario and our optimized scenario. And if I now select our optimized scenario, then I will see all of the data of this scenario in this NV Central, and I can then manage this data. So for example, when I click on input data and maybe go to raster area input files, I can see here that I have the INX file from my base scenario, the playground status quo. And I am shown here the INX file, so the model area file, of our optimized scenario, which includes some changes to the model area. And if I like, I can now, for example, select this optimized scenario here and then click on open and edit 3D model. And this will then open our model area. After a little bit of waiting, this is shown here. So you see we have opened our model area. We can also view it in 3D if we like. And this is basically our optimized scenario 
of the playground. We could do the same for the status quo scenario, so our base scenario, if you like, the same way I have shown you. So we would just select the playground status quo INX here and then press open and edit 3D model. What we can also do is create a completely new model area, if you like. For that, you would just have to click on this button here. If you go to weather data, we can see the project specific Fox file that is being used. We can see here that we only have one Fox file, which is in our base scenario folder. So we met underscore workspace backslash playground. And this Fox file is then used for both simulations for the uh, base scenario simulation and also for the optimized scenario simulation. If I would have a specific Fox file for the optimized scenario, then this would show here. If I want, I can now, for example, click on a day and see what climate data we have for this day and basically choose what day I want to work with for my simulation. If we now go to simulations, we can see again that we have two different SimX files, simulation settings files. We have again the base scenario file and we have a optimized scenario file. If we like, we can now, for example, click on our playground optimized file of our optimized scenario and again, choose to open and edit the simulation file. After a while, we can see that the simulation settings have opened and we can see that it has selected our simulation settings file that we wanted to open. Again, I can do the same for the base scenario file, click on it, open and edit the simulation file and then I can edit whatever I like. I can also now choose to directly run a simulation. So if I click on this button here, it's going to start a simulation. In this case, it is normal that you don't see a simulation window. This will just run and after it is finished, it will show you that it is finished and then you can start your data analysis. If you want to see the progress, we have a solution for that as well. Just select a SimX file before you press on run simulation, you can check this box here saying run in terminal mode. And then if I press on run simulation, the command window of Windows will pop up and will basically show me the progress of the simulation. So now it has loaded in all of the database items and we can also see it has loaded in the model area. Let's now go to the last section, which is the map section. And as you can see here, with the playground, you already get a couple of analysis maps that we have created. So you don't even have to create your own maps. You can directly click on one of these maps here and then choose to open and edit the map file. So for example, let's maybe choose potential air temperature map with some wind vectors on it. Click on it and then you can select open and edit map file. And again, after a while, you will see that it opens the map file, the Leonardo map. And what you can now here see is the potential air temperature and some wind vectors that are shown in this map here. We have created these maps for every hourly time step for the whole day. So if you now want to analyze different time steps, you can go on this arrow here and select one of the time steps that you want to analyze. So for example, let's choose 6 p.m in the afternoon. If I now want to load the map, I have to press on this button here and we can see it's loading the map here and I can now see how the potential air temperature develops at 6 p.m. on the 6th of July 2024. All right, so we saw that the MVMAT Central allows you to manage your projects, it allows you to create scenarios, it gives you a better streamline in working with MVMAT files. When you get a very big MVMAT project, it can happen that you suddenly have around 20 different simulation settings files, 20 different model areas. And this tool is basically helping you in managing all of this stuff. And it also allows you to save your analysis output maps and gives you also an easy access to them. All right, so I hope you like the MVMAT Central and I hope it makes your life easier working with MVMAT projects. Let's now have a look at the new simulation settings. To access the simulation settings, also formerly known as NV Guide, we need to click on this simulation settings button here in the MVMAT launcher. 
After a while, we can see that the simulation settings application, formerly known as the NB Guide, has opened. And we can see that we still have a mandatory settings section, which contains our general simulation settings that we need to define, and it contains our meteorological settings that we need to define. Let's talk first about the general settings. Here we can select our scenario that we want to work with. We can still define the simulation date and time. We can define the simulation name and settings. We can choose if we want to use the default output folder, which is basically created in the same folder where your simx file is, or you can choose to set a individual output folder if you, for example, want to save your simulation files on a network drive. And on the model area, we can now select our model area file if we like to do so. We can see here that we can select either a base scenario file or our optimized scenario file. I'm going to choose our optimized scenario file. Now in the meteorological settings, we can choose to simulate a basic weather or if we want to simulate a detailed weather. Formerly, this was called a simple forcing and this was called a full forcing. If I go to basic meteorology, not a lot has changed, so we can still define a temperature and humidity curve over the whole day. We can define the time of the maximum and minimum air temperature as well as relative humidity. We can define individual values for individual hours of the day. So for example, let's put here 25 degrees Celsius. We can see that the temperature curve updates and we can again define the wind and radiation settings here. Under the advanced metrology, you can now see that we have merged our forcing file manager into the NB guide. So now we don't have two software applications for that, but it's all merged into one software. Here we can then, just as in the forcing file manager, import a CSV file or an EPW or TRY file to create our metrology file. I have now loaded in an example file here from Frankfurt am Main, and I can now see here, clicking on the different days, the metrological data uh, of the days and yeah, choose whatever day I like to choose. If I then know the day that I want to simulate, I just go back into the general settings. Let's say, for example, I'm taking the 12th of July. Then I go to the general settings and click on the start date and define the 12th of July here. So that's basically it about the metrology section. Let's now have a look at the advanced settings, which were formerly known as the optional settings. And basically what came with the update is that we made them a little bit easier and we tidied them up a little bit. So for example, if I go to the soil settings, I can now see here that I still have the same option as before. I can define the soil temperature and the soil humidity. But if I click here, I see that I cannot change anything yet. If I want to change something, I need to check this box here. And now I'm able to use these sliders here and yeah, can define the soil humidity and the soil temperature as I like. After I edited them, I can now uncheck this box and I can see that I cannot edit anything anymore. The same goes for the other sections. As you can see, we've tidied them up in some places, made it a little bit easier to understand and always included this checkbox here so you can't do any changes by mistake. All right, so these are the major things that we have changed with the new version 5.7. I hope you liked it. Um, I hope you liked the new changes and I wish you a lot of fun uh, using Ambimet and see you next time.